Hello, everyone. Welcome to a cooking demo today. This is something a little different than we normally do in our career exploration videos. This time, we are here with Chef May of El Molino High School and Chef John Ash. They are going to do an East Meets West pasta cook-off. And so we're going to start out today with Chef John doing a pasta dish and uh, explaining, explaining the culinary practices behind what he's doing. And then we will switch over to Chef May and we'll, we'll see what she's doing. So uh, Chef John, I know you've cooked up, cooked up some of the pasta already. I saw it boiling. Um, do you want to start off and just tell us about this dish you're making? Sure, I'd be glad to. Uh, this is a very classic uh, Italian pasta dish. It's actually become even more famous uh, in recent times. It seems like it's being featured in every culinary magazine, newspaper uh, that you can imagine. And it's the simplest thing in the world, but there are a couple of important things to pay attention to. So I've already cooked off this pasta. Uh, a point about pasta, you may wonder why when you go into the market, pasta is, some pasta is really expensive, relatively, and some pasta is really cheap. And uh, so the deal with, with getting is get good pasta. And this one actually has it on the package. This is good organic pasta. And it's identified as being bronze cut. And what that means is they make the paste of water and semolina flour, and then they shove it very slowly through uh, dyes uh, that, uh, that are bronze, that are made from bronze. And what it does is it's, you can't see it really, but you can kind of feel it when you touch the pasta. It uh, causes it to be a little rough on the surface. And the, why that's good is that it, it holds on to the sauce. Uh, cheap pasta, uh, they don't do that. They don't take the time to do it. And it's also kind of slow, slow dried, which uh, improves that too. So I have some capellini here, which is a thinner kind of spaghetti. You could use any long pasta that you wanted to for this. So I've got the water here. I'm gonna take, a, take about a cup of water and set it aside uh, just, and I'll show you what we're gonna do with that. And the rest of this, we're gonna drain uh, in, in here. And I have my water here and, so what I'm gonna do is add to the pot that we cook, it's a one pot meal, which is also really great. Uh, add as much butter as you want, you know, about a cup of butter. Uh, I sort of feel like the more butter, the better. Uh, and we're gonna let that melt in there. And the other thing, this is again called uh, cheese and pepper, cacio pepe uh, in Italian is, don't ever use, actually, if you have any of this pre-ground pepper in your kitchen, throw it out immediately. Don't, uh, don't ever have it around. Uh, you only want to use pepper that you have freshly ground. And you can grind it you know, all kinds of ways. I've used this little uh, coffee grinder here, which I turned into a spice grinder. And what I'm going to do is, uh, whoop, oh, it's not plugged in, but I've already, I've already ground it. So. It's okay, so I'm gonna add, and when you smell this and compare it to th this awful stuff, this has no aroma or flavor because it's all dissipated over time. This one is, and this is really important for this dish because it has so few ingredients. I'm gonna add a good chunk of the ground pepper in there like so. so that's melting. Uh, I'm gonna put this around, I'll set this over here and get it out of the way. Uh, what we're going to do now is add the pasta uh, back in uh, and uh, to coat it with the butter and the pepper. And the reason I've saved a little bit of the water is that it helps to loosen things up. And now what I'm going to do to finish this and I can decide if we have enough pepper in there or not, I can always add more. But the whole idea is that you want it to be very peppery. So what I'm gonna do is, and this is something that I'll say to you too, don't buy cheese that is already 
grade it, grade it yourself. It's a very simple thing to do. You can just use a box grader. So don't ever, um, don't ever buy this because it's like the pepper. Once it's been ground, it loses flavor and it loses it very quickly, but we'll go ahead and use it anyway. So I'm gonna put in about a cup of that. Uh, I've got an egg here, whoa, uh, that we're gonna add just the yolk. Uh, when you crack an egg, always remember, don't crack it on the corner of anything. Uh, crack it uh, on the flat, and that way you minimize the amount of, uh, of uh, so what I'm doing here is just getting the yolk. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna discard the white, there it is. So I'm gonna throw the yolk in there like so. I'm gonna stir it around. So the, the couple of takeaways are freshly ground pepper, freshly ground cheese. So I don't know whether you can see in the pot here, but it's getting kind of a little gummy. So I'm gonna add a little bit of our water to uh, loosen it up a bit. And I'm also gonna add more pepper. Uh, May, could you hand me that pepper? Um, because it needs it. So we're almost done with this. But the, the key to this is this very fragrant, beautiful pepper. Notice how I carefully measured everything out here. You don't have to, this is that kind of addition. So to, to finish this, I'm gonna add just a touch more of our cooking water, uh, but this is beautiful and creamy now. Oh, let me, they have given me a towel, which would be great, is to put this on the plate, uh, give it a twist so that it looks pretty, huh? And you could add whatever else you wanted to this, but this is the classic recipe. You don't want to uh, muck it up with too much, but you could maybe add a little bacon, cooked bacon or something if you wanted to too. So there it is. We're going to then finish it with a little bit of our cheese on top of it, like so. Uh, and then just for color, maybe a little green. I have some pretty parsley here, like so. And there you go, that's the Cacio Pepe, the classic Italian recipe. So question, can you see that? Yes, yes we can. That That's is good. Uh -huh. Will you uh, do me a favor and hold it up to the, the main camera there in front of you? This one? Yeah. Okay, so there it is. Beautiful. Okay. And that was cool, that was quick. I, I have to admit, I expected it to be longer. Well, it's, it's one of those things in Italy, uh, pa great pasta is not complicated. Uh, it is often made very simply. And again, it depends upon having good pasta, uh, pasta that's made properly. Uh, it, it, it's a little more expensive, but it's really worth it. Uh, freshly grated uh, pepper, freshly grated cheese, uh, because once those things are done ahead of time, they lose all of their... Uh, lovely flavor. So, uh, and that's it. I mean, this is the, the the greatest demonstration I can think of of what great Italian pasta is all about. It's not about uh, do, doing complicated uh, preparations. It's about the quality of the ingredients, and you can do something very simple. So, there you go. That's awesome. I. So, are you going to you know uh, I'm gonna bring that to my house or? I mean, it's, all, it's almost lunchtime and you're making me hungry. I'm eating it here. So you can watch me eat it if you want to. Oh, that's not the same. <laughs> that's like torture. Okay, I'm gonna set this over here. We're gonna move Chef May in here and she's gonna do some, uh, I guess we would call it uh, Eastern pasta. Is that what you call it? Asian <laughs> pasta, East meets West. Oh, kind of pasta. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Chef John. You're welcome. I'm going to turn out to a <laughs> now he's going to be my sous chef. <laughs> so, um, one of the things I have, might have not mentioned to you, Brendan, um, in a very short acquaintance, um, John has always been my mentor. Uh, I used to went 20, about 15 years ago when I reinvented myself. I wanted to become a chef, so I went back to the JC and learned everything that I need to learn in about cooking at a culinary art uh, program. 
and John was my teacher and also I was his teacher assistant. So since then, John has been taking me under his wing. I can pretty much fly on my own now, <laughs> but he was the biggest reason why I have got into this industry and, and, and more so become an educator. And over the years uh, from a mentorship and it turned into a beautiful friendship. So thank you very much. And it's one heck of a mentor you got there. <laughs> yeah, couldn't pick a better mentor. I uh, know, <laughs> he couldn't pick a better one. Okay. So um, Chef May, tell us, what are you, what are you gonna make for us today? So since the theme is kind of East meet West and John, of course, is representing the West uh, cuisine and I'm going to take you to my world. I was born and raised in Singapore and Malaysia. And so when I first came to America about 30 years ago, as a first generation immigrant, I was invited to a friend's house at the college to taste their spaghetti and she's an Italian. And so I have the, my first spaghetti pasta and that home and it just blow me away. It's like, that was what I've been missing all my life. This wonderful spaghetti pasta dish. So I want to recreate that recipe. I went home and at that time I was a starving student at the college. And so I was staying with this family uh, in exchange for cooking, I would get free room and board. And I wanted to create this new recipe that I just tasted, the spaghetti, but I didn't have the recipe at hand with me. So I was just thinking outside my box, just kind of memorize what was the taste looks taste like in that spaghetti pasta. So here's my, the, uh, east meat west spaghetti pasta dish that I'm gonna show you in this cooking demo. And it's almost using the same ingredients except as you know about spaghetti, they do use some ground beef. So I saute some ground beef, I'm gonna add it to this pasta. So I have no idea that the traditional spaghetti pasta, it just blanch the, you know, boil the noodles and add the uh, prepare spaghetti sauce to the pasta and add the cheese. Instead, at that time, I was trying to kind of just create what I know to the Asian um, foundation of cooking techniques. So I stir fry that whole pasta dish with a little bit of soya sauce and oyster sauce. And instead of becoming a Italian pasta dish, when I served to the, uh, to the family, they were saying, what is this dish? We have never had it before. And I go, you never have spaghetti before? <laughs> and they say, no, we hate spaghetti. We will never eat spaghetti. It's so boring. And I say, well, I just make you guys some spaghetti. And they tasted my, my uh, uh, Eastern spaghetti pasta. And they go, oh, but we like this. This is good. <laughs> there you go. That's my... Uh, Asian spaghetti pasta dish that I'm going to show you. So just like the, what Chef John has shown you, we're going to first blanch the pasta noodle. And if you ask anybody, there has been always a debate where the pasta come from. Who is the first country to originate pasta, right? Now, if you ask Chef John Ash, he would say, oh, the Italian. And I would say, no, the Chinese, the Asians was the one that invented the pasta making. Here we go. So in that hot boiling water, we just gonna add a little bit of salt into the pasta water. And when the water comes to a full boil, I'm gonna cook the pasta. Okay, Much like what John has shown you, Chef John has shown you, cooking the pasta in a hot, salty blanching water. So I'm gonna press it in. The thing not to do is don't break your pasta, right? Uh, the same way that Chef John has not done, uh, he, he put the whole strain of pasta into it. Because noodles in the Asian culture has always the representations of longevity. 
So you want to make sure that pasta stays the, the whole uh, thread that represents symbolic of longevity. I have to admit, I have always been the type of person that cracks my, uh, my pasta in half before throwing it in. Well, now you know, not to try. Uh, I know, now I know. Okay, so while the pasta is being cooked, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna use a saute pan. So I've got two things going on. Cook the pasta. And so I'm gonna do the traditional Chinese stir fry in a saute pan, right? But with my spaghetti sauce and pasta. So always cold oil, hot pan. That is the foundations of cooking 101. It drives me crazy when I see my student putting um, oil to a cold pan. Always preheat your saute pan, your wok, whatever that you're gonna cook with before you add the oil. You wanna feel like it's like almost like a heat of a radiator, right? Okay. So I put a little bit of, you can use any kind of oil. Uh, preferably probably gonna use like vegetable oil, canola oil, and I add a little bit of butter to this because I wanna kind of, you know, represent the East meat West, right? Okay, so now I got, I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic. Asians are always cooked with garlic. And my pre saute ground beef. So here goes the spaghetti sauce. You can have that homemade. I'm just going to use the jar one, okay? But just like Chef John, he taught me to carefully measure everything <laughs> since it's my mentor. So, <laughs> you know, cooking is so much about using your sensory, you know, you smell the, use the nose to smell the food, the fragrant, right? The aromatic, uh, the aroma that comes from sauteing the uh, garlic and shallots, right? And using the eyes, look at the color changes. Listen to the year, the, using the ear to listen where the oil is ready when it sizzles. So I add some fresh tomatoes to it. My pasta is, Almost ready. So usually, you, like you all know, that you always cook your pasta to al dente, right? So it's kind of bite to the tube. The same thing about uh, cooking in Asian noodles. Uh, it tends we tend to overcook the noodles a lot. But if you're gonna cook with Asian noodles, you're gonna have to blanch it with cold water to kind of stop the the glutens and the starch that develop from the rice. Uh, noodles, okay? With pasta, you're just gonna drain it. All right, so then I'm gonna use an egg. I'm gonna just crack the whole egg into this. And I'm gonna stir the eggs into my spaghetti and ground beef sauce. Okay. Uh, it just take another probably 30 seconds to the pasta. It's important to also stir the pasta when they are being boiled in the hot water so it do not become a clumps. There we go. And the same thing, you can add any kind of meat to it. You can add leftover chicken, you can add shrimp, you can add uh, pork, bacon, right? So I'm gonna strain my pasta. And then we're gonna add it to the sauce. And then we're gonna stir fry it together. Now here's my secret recipe or uh, ingredients to the recipe. It's a little bit of uh, oyster sauce and sauce sauce into the pasta. 
that's where my uh, training cooking Asian come into this dish. Okay, then I can add some basil or parsley. So you can also add a little bit of that stock from the pasta water. So it doesn't get too dry. And there you go. It's all ready. I'm gonna dish it up. And maybe just garnish with a little bit more basil or parsley if you like. And this is totally optional. You can sprinkle a little bit of cheese on top or you can skip it. Parmesan cheese, of course. There you go. That's my uh, Asian style of spaghetti, stir fry spaghetti with pasta. Oh, oh, look at that. That's perfect. So aren't those beautiful? Look at wow. this two dish. That. You know, the little differences, you know, like your little... The, the, the soy sauce and what was the other sauce that you added, Chef? I added a little bit of oyster sauce. An oyster sauce, something like that I've never even thought about. Oh, uh, well, what those two sauce impart a really rich umami flavor to the dish. And is that sweet and kind of that savory and deliciousness that goes in a lot of kinds of food, right? Mm -hmm. There you go. Thank you both so much. Thank you, Chef May and Chef John. For doing this. I think it was a great experience. So bon appétit. Bon appétit. <laughs> how, how, how do you say it in Chinese? How chit. <laughs> <What>? How chit. <laughs> <laughs>